Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be answering the question How would Maurizio Pochettino set up Manchester United? Remember to subscribe if you are new and smash that like button. But anyway, let's get this party started. Following the mutual termination of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's contract, Manchester United are looking for a new manager. Despite a whole host of names being thrown around, Maurizio Pochettino makes a lot of sense to me. So today, I'm going to take a look at how he'll set up the Reds. A progressive and modern manager with a clear style of play, Maurizio Pochettino is a top-tier manager. Throughout his career, he showed himself to be a tactically flexible manager that uses a variety of different systems. That being said, his favourite shape is the 4-2-3-1. When he takes over a club, he uses this as a base to quickly get the ideas to the players across. Only once his philosophy is understood do we tend to see Pochettino tinker with different formations. In terms of his philosophy, Pochettino deploys a vertical tiki-taka style of play. Basically, Poch likes his sides to dominate the ball using short passes to build out from the back. But rather than endless possession that we see in traditional tiki-taka sides, Pochettino uses direct passes to quickly break the lines and flip the tempo. During his time at Spurs, we often saw Pochettino fizzing the ball into the feet of Harry Kane to quickly break the opposition's shape and allow the striker to link with the attacking midfielders and attack the back line. A key aspect of Pochettino's philosophy is attacking fullbacks. These players are used to hold his side's width. This allows the forwards to narrow and operate close to one another, allowing for quick interplay that won Pochettino so many plaudits. Because of their importance to his style of play, we often saw fullbacks drastically improving under his coaching, with Ben Davies, Kieran Trippier, Danny Rose and Carl Walker all becoming high quality Premier League players under Pochettino. When in possession, the fullbacks are often used to progress the play. Like we mentioned, this often sees them playing direct into the strikers, but by allowing the wingers ahead of them to narrow, underlapping passing lanes open up down the line. This is another key aspect of Pochettino's philosophy, underlaps and third man runs. In the final third, Pochettino pushes his fullbacks even higher, allowing his front four to operate inside the width 18 yard box. Chances are created through direct crosses from fullbacks, but we also see these players play inside to the forwards. The intense work Pochettino puts his players through on the training ground develops almost a telepathic relationship between all of the players pulling in the same direction. This often sees passes inside, forward stepping over the ball and getting on the end of progressive through balls before crossing for a teammate or scoring for themselves. Alternatively, we see fullbacks look for an underlap down the line to a forward who can cross low. This attacking structure is supported by a double pivot who look to offer security for the front six. They are there as options to recycle the ball and work the ball to the other flank or even to create a direct pass forward into the forwards, but they're not playmakers. Instead, they screen the defence and are on hand to provide protection in the transition whilst the narrow forwards are always there to counter-press. The narrowness of Pochettino's central players makes his counter-press very effective as they can quickly press the ball known and their defensive teammates can provide cover. If his sides can't regain possession, they'll drop into a compact 4-2-3-1 and look to deploy a high press. This comes in a man-to-man -man scheme with the nearest player pressing the ball whilst his teammates pick up the opposition's passing options. Without the ball, Pochettino looks to stay compact centrally, force the opposition wide where his team can cut the pitch in half and press against the touch line. Whilst this type of pressing can be undone through quick switches of play, it's highly effective against all but the very best sides. Pochettino's best 4-2-3-1 came at Spurs, where he took the team from consistent sixth place finishers to Premier League and Champions League challengers in less than three seasons. In this shape, he used two attacking wingbacks, two ball-playing defenders shielded by a controlling defensive midfielder and a more attack-minded ball-carrying midfielder, a deep-lying forward spearheading the attack with an inside forward on the left, a second striker through the middle and a playmaker on the right. Given this is the system that saw his Spurs side pick up more points than anyone between 2015-16 and 16-17 seasons, it's logical to assume that Pochettino would base his Manchester United side on this 4-2-3-1. Pochettino's high defensive line that allows his team to compress the pitch when pressing means a sweeper keeper is preferred. This could open the door for Dean Henderson to regain the number one spot, given he's made more than three times as many defensive actions outside the box last season per 90 than David De Gea. That being said, De Gea's Stop stopping has been very impressive this season, so you would probably expect him to continue. In central defence, Rafa Varane would be the first name on the team sheet, whilst Harry Maguire would more than likely keep his spot. Despite his indifferent form, Maguire is still a very good ball-playing centre-back that is imperious 
with the ball in the air, given Pochettino's high press often forces long balls that his centre-backs have to challenge for, Maguire's aerial dominance will be very important and a vote of confidence from the new manager could see the number five return to his best form. At full-back, I think we could see a change. The attacking emphasis placed on these players and the need for good passing skills to be able to fizz passes into the forwards would see Diogo Delo replace Aaron Wan-Bissaka at right back with Luke Shaw continuing on the left. Whilst not defensively as solid as Wan-Bissaka, Delo has a much better passing range than the 1v1 specialist, so could help instill Poch's philosophy from day one. Whilst the Argentine improves Wan-Bissaka on the training ground. That being said, we could see big defensive improvements from Delo. At Spurs, Danny Rose was a left winger, but Pochettino turned him into a defensive monster at fullback. In fact, in the 2016-17 season, when Spurs picked up 86 points, Danny Rose ranked second amongst fullbacks for tackles won per game in the Premier League. Shaw, meanwhile, announced himself to the Premier League during his season and a half under Pochettino. The Argentine unleashed the 16-year-old prodigy at Southampton, giving him full license to get forward and supplement the attack. And given the levels of performance from Shaw, you'd expect Pochettino to get a similar tune now that Shaw is a much more complete player. Moving forward, the double pivot provides the biggest conundrum. Manchester United don't have a natural defence midfielder that can play every minute. We could see a centre-back being deployed there, much like Pochettino did with Eric Dyer at Spurs, but you'd more than likely see Scott McTominay in a defensive role. Because of the nature of Pochettino's double pivot, with two players always screening the defence, McTominay wouldn't be isolated. His press resistance and capacity for ball winning would also make him an ideal model for this role. On paper, Pochettino's ideal ball carrier midfielder is Paul Pogba. A strong, athletic and technically gifted footballer, Pogba is very similar to Moussa Dembele, who dominated under the Argentine. Despite his best performances, coming further up the pitch, the structure and clear style of play implemented by Pochettino would help Pogba stick to its task. During France's 2018 World Cup win, Pogba played a similar role alongside Angulo Kante, with Didier Deschamps giving Pogba clear instructions. Whilst this was a small sample size, Pogba was excellent and showing he had the capacity to succeed in the right environment. Alternatively, Donny van der Beek could fulfil this role. Van der Beek is a superb short passer and excels at moving the ball quickly. Against Watford, Donny showcased his suitability for a progressive double pivot. Despite only coming on at half-time, Van der Beek ran first for tackles and chances created, whilst only Jadon Sancho played more passes into the penalty area. Whilst not in the usual mould of Pochettino's more attacking central midfielder, Van der Beek could exchange aspects of their roles with Scott McTominay. This could see Van der Beek controlling the tempo and holding his position as McTominay breaks pressure with ball carries and being free to step up and make tackles. Up front, Cristiano Ronaldo is best suited to the deep-lying forward role. A true complete forward, Ronaldo has shown his ability to play with his back to goal and link with teammates, but still get into the box and finish off moves. The left side inside forward would be Marcus Rashford, one of the most dynamic forwards in the Premier League. Rashford has got a lot of similarities with Human Son, who thrived as an inside forward under Pochettino. Both love a dribble followed by a powerful shot, and at just 24, Rashford still has plenty of time to improve. At number 10, Bruno Fernandes would continue to thrive as a second striker, making runs beyond Ronaldo into his vacated space. However, given Pochettino's preference for interplay, Bruno wouldn't stay as high as he did under Solskjaer. Alternatively, Bruno could be shifted to the right flank to operate as the side's playmaker, whilst Donny van der Beek plays as a second striker. This could suit the increase in creativity we've seen from Bruno Fernandes since Ronaldo's return, with Bruno creating more chances than anyone else in the Premier League. Being able to drift into the number 10 space could also reduce the opponent's ability to man mark him. However, if Bruno did continue at number 10, this would then allow Jadon Sancho to be United's primary playmaker. Sancho thrived in a similar role under Lucien Favre at Dortmund, where he played as a wide playmaker in a 3-4-3. At United, he'd have three goal scorers ahead of him to pick out with his creative passes. Meanwhile, Pochettino's narrow structure allowed him to combine with short passes, bounce one-twos off his teammates, things that allowed him to excel in the Bundesliga. The Maurizio Pochettino revolution at Manchester United could actually hit the ground running. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer moved the club forward during his management and has built his side with lots of talented young players that Pochettino could work with. We've also seen United score Pochettino-esque goals this season. Take Ronaldo's first against Atalanta, 
Pogba in possession, he goes inside to McTominay, who turns and finds Bruno. Bruno passes it to Ronaldo, who lays it off to Greenwood. Quickening the pace, Greenwood finds Bruno running in behind, who tees up Ronaldo with a cheeky back heel to finish. This was a fantastic team goal, it was only possible because of how close the forwards were to each other. Meanwhile, this is only possible because of the fullbacks are holding the width. After McTominay passes it to Fernandez, United carved through Atalanta in just nine touches, using a third man run to do the damage. This is the evidence that United can play in Pochettino's preferred style, and under the Argentine, we could see a lot more goals like this. But anyway, guys, what do you think? Is this how you think Pochettino would set up Manchester United? Let me know in the comments below. I've been Statman Dave. See you later. Subscribe if you do. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?